What's up guys, welcome back to Diving Garage. In today's video, we're working on my 1979 Chevy K10. I'm gonna show you how to do a Blazer fuel tank swap in your square body and set up a future-proof fuel system. Let's dive in. All right, if you're looking for a fuel system for your square body, you're in the middle of restoring, this is it. So what you have here is a 77 to 88 K5 Blazer fuel tank. And uh, this is a 25 gallon, this is what I went with, but I'll be honest with you, go with the 31 not only for the extra six gallons but there's a little more support for the 31 gallon than there is for the 25. if you do want the 25 we can still make it work i'm going to show you how i did it i'll say right up front doing this is not hard so if you're not sure you want to do it but you're a little scared don't be scared just dive in it's nice and easy all you really have to do is drill four holes and cut this one cross member this cross member right here is actually mounted on the bottom section of the frame cross member. So what you have to do is you have to cut the rivets off, which I would recommend get like an angle grinder or something, is do an X cut and grab an air chisel and just chisel out the rest. It'll drop right out. So it's on the bottom, about that far back. Flip it upside down and move it up here. And what does that do? Uh, well, it retains that cross member and also it gives the tank something to push up on. So that way when you're mounting the straps, which I'll show you in a second, uh, you have sort of a positive stop. And one thing too, I'll show you while I'm up, up here, is that this rear cross member does not need to be removed. So you don't have to remove it. What I actually did was I got a little piece of flat bar and welded it to it to actually extend it to give the tank something else to push up on to give it that positive stop. And there's one more thing you have to do to make this all nice and easy, is get yourself a piece of angle iron, I'll come show you in a second. And so that way you can drill two of the holes for your mounting straps. And you can run the straps through here loop them around and hook them up to the back. All right, now let's talk about this fuel sender a little bit. So what I want you to do is do not buy a sender for a 79 Blazer, don't do it. That's for a carbureted setup, right? Even if you are running carburetors, hang with me. What I want you to do is get a sender for an 88 Blazer. Now why? Because with the 88 Blazer, you get an in-tank pump. And also you get a little bit better designed fuel sender, nice wiring harness, and uh, you can then you can run these little connectors which i'll go over later on to connect to your an lines if you're going that route um, i'm going to go over the sender in just a second here but this is the way whatever you do do not buy a 79 blazer uh, fuel sender you want an 88 blazer fuel hanger with pump with in-tank pump setup all right and this here is the strap setup so uh, with this rearmost cross member you just drill a hole we'll drill two holes into there run your straps in uh, i would only run them down like four or five threads because the straps are straight when you get them you have to bend them and then it just runs oh i can go over here a little better view and it runs under like that and let me take you to the front and it comes up from the bottom up to this top stud right here and uh, that's pretty much it that's really easy and like i said this is that um angle iron cross member i put in you don't need this bottom section but that's it so we got something to bolt it into and nice and easy uh, and also if you're going to run this i'm running a 10 micron fuel pump right here if you're going to end up doing that it gives you a nice place to put it all right now let's talk about the filler neck and the fuel sender so i went with a center outlet filler neck it's a little bit of a classic uh, look classic design and it really is super easy because this is the main fill for the tank and all you got to do is run straight out but i used to have this setup going to the left and what i did is i ran it right here to this little gap but you won't have this problem if you're using a factory bed. There's a nice outlet right there. Uh, but on the fuel center, it's really easy. You got your 5 8 to go to your filler. And you have your fuel feed. You have your fuel return. And this is your vent. I haven't had the vent hooked up right now. Um, but I'm about to do that here in a minute. And then you got a ground for the tank. And then you got the harness coming over here. And this is going to be where your um, fuel tank level wire is. And also your power wire. And it goes down to the pump. So that's pretty much it. It's nice and easy. And whenever you go to get some gas, you can go to either pump. It's not, it's pretty cool. And then once you come out of the fuel send line, you come up here. And like I was saying, I have a 10 micron pump right there, nice and accessible. You could probably jam it back there or even up there, but I, that was just the easy spot to get to. And if you're gonna come over this cross member like I am, make sure you put something to protect the lines. You don't want this thing rubbing through because with this setup, every fuel line that you see is a pressure line or then it's a return line. So you don't wanna be shooting fuel all over the road. I don't know where I get all this stuff from. To so the tank, I got a Rock Auto. This is a Spectra Premium brand. 
Uh, it's a good brand, not a sponsor, just something that ended up working out really well. And the fuel hanger is a, also a Spectra Premium. And the pump I got on there, that was actually a Carter that's only making 13 PSI, but for a carbureted setup, that's perfect. And then these are just some AN lines and these fittings, these special fittings that go from a hard line to an AN, those are from ICT Billet. And this is just some rubber hose you get from your local auto parts store. And then this, uh, you might just see it as like utility, uh, fuel filler neck. This is an inch and a half, and this is an inch and a half, so I went with it. And it also had this vent line that goes to the sender here. So this works out really well. Just make sure you give it a nice ground too. All right, so here is the sender. So let's get a quick overview of everything. This thing looks pretty sick. Um, it has O-rings already on it, ready to go. The fittings, ready to go. It has this wiring sticking down that connects to this harness. It's actually pretty long. I don't know how far your connection is going to be, but it's got enough cable for it. And also you get a little piece of hose to jump your uh, pump to this uh, fit connector right here. And then you get some more O-rings just in case. You get a new tank ring, a new tank lock ring, this little grommet, and a fuel sock, and this mystery device. Okay, so now that we got the sender all ready to go, now we need the pump. So here's the pump I'm gonna be running. Uh, this is a Carter pump. It'll make 13 PSI, which is perfect for your carbureted application. Uh, you're not gonna be running fuel injection with this, but we're not, we're not doing that right now, so that's okay. Um, so this is just gonna sit right about here. And again, that piece of rubber hose is gonna connect, connect it up. And also when you buy the pump, it comes with a little bag of goodies. It's got some connectors. Uh, it's got the uh, wiring connector that it feeds onto the output right there. So that's good. We do have to connect our own wires, that's not a big deal. And a couple extra things, things we already have. So we got some duplicates. And uh, the fuel sender came with this sock. And I wasn't sure if it was going to or not, so I ordered another sock. This is the one I got. So this is the one that came with the sender, and this is the one I bought separately. I'm gonna be using this one. Why? Because it's bigger and it's green, so that's cool. All right, so now let's get this thing set up. And if you're not quite sure how to set it up, the sender does come with instructions and a nice little diagram here. And to be honest, this is plenty. Um, so all we're gonna do is set it up just like this. So now that we got that connected, uh, I'm running AN lines, and uh, what there you got two options. You can either cut this and put on a compression fitting, or you can get these slick units from ICT Billet. And what they do is instead of having to cut that line that's all nice and ready to go, you just put these on there. So let me put the part numbers in here. Uh, this is F06ANFM1415. <laughs> I'll put it, I tell you what, I'll put them in the description. All right. Anyway, so what these do is, is there's a uh, feed and a return. Uh, so you grab the larger of the two, which is the feed, and then you just screw it on. So that way you can retain the factory style connector and you can change it over to AN line. So this is perfect, no nonsense, really easy uh, connection upgrade here. Cool. So now I'll just get those tightened up. And here we go. One fuel sender, ready to drop in the tank. Not hard to put together at all, and these fittings are gonna make the rest of the install a breeze. Pretty excited about that. And we even got to use the uh, wiring harness that was on here, so that made that one less thing we had to do. I am gonna have to cut this, though, because my connections are not, it's not this. So I'll take care of that, though. I wanna mention real quick, on this harness, this gray wire is your fuel pump power, and this is your uh, sender level. This purple. I don't know, it might be purple, might be maroon. I'm colorblind, right? All right, so now that we got it all put together and installed in the truck, let's run it so you can see how it works. One last quick note about all this. You wanna make sure that you uh, go ahead and upgrade your factory um, wiring. And as you can see right there, 
I actually have a fuel pump relay with a 10 gauge feed and a 10 gauge pump feed. Uh, I haven't tidied it up quite yet. Uh, once I do, I'll get it all zip tied up nice. Uh, but you want to make sure you upgrade that stuff so that way you don't run into any uh, fuses popping or <laughs> fires or just any sort of meltdowns. All right, I've been loving this switch panel here. It's making everything real nice and easy to get to. It's a good spot for it. And I only had to trim just a tiny bit, or really not even trim, sand, just a tiny bit right here to get it to fit. And a uh, factory cover will still fit over this and you won't be able to see any of that. I know some of you guys are purists out there. Uh, but anyway, so we got a master power and this is all my uh, fuse panel and my gauges and such. And this is the fuel pump. And down here, I have just a quick voltmeter and this is actually the pressure. So you can see there, we got a nice seven PSI and that's perfect. All right, check it out. This thing is running and you can barely hear that. When the truck is on, not hearing that at all. Totally silent. And at the fuel regulator, it looks like we have about eight. And I also have my uh, electronic gauge sensor hooked up there so I can monitor in the inside of the truck. But this pump is working perfect. This is exactly what you need to feed your carburetor. Especially if you're running like, and maybe like a double pumper or like me with this Edelbrock, I got the dual feed system set up. Uh, it just, it, it gives it that little bit more capability to keep up with whatever you're doing. All right, so we got the pump installed, but I talked about being future proof, right? So here's the thing. So on this truck, I'm going to be putting a supercharger on it. I'm going to need 60 PSI. That pump will never do it. It'll make 13 at best. So what, since it's a stock hanger and with the pump comes off separately, all you got to do is get yourself a pump that fits there, which is, I'll put it up on the screen here. This is the pump I'm going to be using. Not a sponsor, but this is what I think will work for my setup. And all you have to do is upgrade that into the stock hanger and you're in business. Even with this setup, if you don't maybe want to move to 60 PSI, but you need, I don't know, 15 or you need 20 PSI, it's the same deal. Just upgrade that pump to whatever spec that you need and you're ready to go. Uh, it really doesn't get any easier than this. Uh, I want to do a quick note about external fuel pumps. Um, in this case, since we're using a stock tank, I think you need to use a stock hanger and pump setup. I tried using an external pump for years, and with this stock tank, I never could get it quite right. But what an external pump needs is it needs to be sitting, the inlet needs to be sitting at the bottom or below the bottom of your tank. So to do that on a square body, where are you gonna put it? There's nowhere to put it. But no, beneath the tank is just air. So what those require rec really have a better application for is in a car, it's where you have the fuel cell in the trunk, sitting on top of the trunk surface and uh, you can run a line going down to a fuel pump. So that way it's gravity fed. You don't want those external pumps sucking because they're not good at sucking fuel and then pushing it. You're, you're asking too much. What you want to do in a stock situation is have the pump at the lowest level that the gas is. And so it's only sucking maybe that far instead of this far. All right guys, and that is it. Not too hard, right? So all in all, you can do this for probably under 200 bucks to get the tank, the sender, the pump, uh, the lines in the regulator, that like cost you a little bit more. But to get the most important components of your fuel system, you're starting out with a great base, great foundation, to get you going in the right direction. That's all for today, folks. If you liked the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and get out there and dive your next project. Catch you next time.